That was the origin of European May Day, which has since become a regular institution all over the world, but not in the United States where it began. In 1904, the International Socialist Conference meeting in Amsterdam called on all Social Democratic Party organizations and trade unions of all countries to demonstrate energetically on May 1st for the legal establishment of the eight-hour day, for the class demands of the proletariat, and for universal peace. The Congress made it mandatory upon the proletarian organizations of all countries to stop work on May 1st. Wherever it is, wherever it is possible, without injury to the workers. In many countries, the working class has sought to make May Day an official holiday, and their efforts have largely succeeded. May Day has long been a focal point for demonstrations by unions and various socialist, communist, and anarchist groups. In the United States and Canada, however, the official holiday for workers is Labor Day in September. That ain't right. In 1955, the Catholic Church dedicated May 1st to St. Joseph the Worker. <clears throat> the Catholic Church considers St. Joseph the patron saint of, among others, workers, craftsmen, and, quote, people fighting communism, close quote. <laughs> Right-wing governments have also traditionally sought to repress the message behind International Workers' Day with fascist governments in Portugal, Italy, Germany, and Spain abolishing the workers' holiday, the official May 1st holiday in the U.S. being called Loyalty Day, and the Conservative Party in the United Kingdom currently attempting to abolish the U.K.'s annual May Day bank holiday. In the United States, efforts to officially switch Labor Day to the international date of May 1st have failed. In 1921, following the Russian Revolution of 1917, May 1st was promoted as Americanization Day by the veterans of foreign wars and other groups as a counter to communists. It became an annual event, sometimes featuring large rallies. In I'm almost finished. Believe it. Yeah. Okay. In, in, 19, in 1949, Americanization Day was renamed Loyalty Day. In 1958, the U.S. Congress declared Loyalty Day, the U.S. recognition of May 1st, a national holiday. That same year, President Dwight D. Eisenhower proclaimed May 1st Law Day as well. They couldn't quite figure out what to call it, right? Some unions and union locals in the United States, especially in urban areas with strong support for organized labor, have attempted to maintain a connection with more left-wing labor traditions through their own unofficial observances on May 1st. Some of the largest examples of this occurred during the Great Depression of the 1930s when thousands of workers marched in May Day parades in New York's Union Square. Some left groups have also tried to keep the May Day tradition alive with more radical demonstrations in such cities as New York and Seattle without major union backing. In 2006, May 1st was chosen by mostly Latino immigrants in the United States as the day for the great American boycott, a general strike of undocumented immigrant workers and supporters to protest H.R. 4437 immigration reform legislation they felt was draconian. From April 10th to May 1st of that year, millions of immigrant families in the U.S. called for immigrant rights, workers' rights, and amnesty for undocumented workers. They were joined by socialist and other leftist organizations on May 1st. On May 1st, 2007, a mostly peaceful demonstration in Los Angeles in support of undocumented immigrant workers ended with a widely televised 
dispersal by police officers. In March 2008, the International Longshore and Warehousemen's Union announced that dock workers would move no cargo at any West Coast ports on May 1st, 2008 as a protest against the continuation of the Iraq War and the diversion of resources from domestic needs. For May Day 2010, marches occurred in many cities uniting immigrant and native workers, including New York, San Francisco, Boston, Albany, Chicago, and Los Angeles, most of whom protested against Arizona's anti-immigrant Senate Bill 1070. Finally, May Day is also an internationally recognized distress call. And due to the normal behavior, normal behavior, of the corporations and the banks, that is the normal functioning of the capitalist system, we are in distress. The Great Recession illustrates our distress. The question still on the agenda is, what is to be done? Thank you. Senator G. As we can see by this, we're, this isn't the first time this struggle's begun. Uh, this, this is an ongoing thing and it will continue to be an ongoing thing as long as humanity exists, I'm sure. Um, it was a very thorough job, but we're going to bring Kurt up here to give us a little bit more information about the history of May Day. Also stick around after the, after the uh, rally here today and Subversive Theater is going to do a little skit and a little closing entertainment for us. Give it up for Kurt. All right, well, oh, thank you. Uh, like, uh, like, like I just said, we have uh, my group, Subversive Theater. We try to uh, show, uh, show our um, our contribution to the cause by doing doing plays that take on the issues about people fighting back. We always do a play for May Day every year. This will be our 11th year in a row doing a May Day show. This year, we're we're presenting the play Che by Mario Frati about Che Guevara, as you probably guessed. Uh, that's going to be tonight at Subversive Theater at 7:30. And that's free to everybody, so we, we hope you'll be able to come out and join us for that one. Uh, uh, at uh, the Maddie Freed Playhouse at 255 Great Arrow Avenue in North Buffalo. So I'm, I'm giving out flyers. Please, please claim one. It, it has all the info on there. But we'd love to see you out there. And uh, like was mentioned, we have one actor. The actor who's playing Che is going to come at, uh, towards the end of this rally and, and do a little piece from the show for you guys today. But um, but I, I was brought up here to talk a little bit about May Day. The person before me covered a lot of a lot of good details. So I want to cover a couple of core elements that I think are so important to remember. I mean, question number one is uh, is who out there is pissed off? Uh, all right, who, who, who out there believes that there can be a better world than the world we got today? Okay, who who remembers that there's such a thing as as a uh, time when people fight back against inequality? and exploitation, and corruption, and war, and the abuse of the many at the hands of the few. Well, that is the spirit of May Day. That is what this is all about. Since uh, 1886, when it first began, when the, when the workers first started fighting for the eight-hour day, that radical idea, right, the eight-hour day, well, it was radical at the time. At that time, most workers worked 12, 14, 16 hours a day. It was very common. Workers decided to walk off the job. There were, there were 200,000 workers who struck for the eight-hour day in 1886. There was another 150,000 who didn't go on strike, but instead just left their job after eight hours, and the bosses were powerless to stop them. Ma mass workers just walked out showing that you don't uh, you don't necessarily have to uh, go the hard way you can take the easy way and just walk out the door and fight the system that way the uh, tradition of May Day this is one of the few countries in the world the US is one of the few countries in the world that does not have May Day as a, as a national holiday that dates back to 1894 Grover Cleveland deliberately created the, the uh, holiday of Labor Day as a way of distracting workers away from the more radical tradition of, of May Day. So personally, I make a point of uh, refusing to acknowledge Labor Day every time it comes around because it, I, I still uh, celebrate May Day instead. But uh, from the very beginning, workers uh, took a stand for this. The, the Haymarket Martyrs, as they were called, the, uh, the four people who were executed for leading the May Day demonstrations in Chicago, and uh, oh, uh, the person before me mentioned them, Engel, Fisher, Parsons, and